So welcome, uh, welcome everybody, and finally welcome back after two years struggling with conferences, very difficult. Hey, look around, it looks like crazy, right? Yeah, Almost yeah. every seat occupied here and it yeah. looks so different. Yeah, we have three rooms actually, full of people <laughs> at the moment, looking to this talk. So uh, we have more than 600 people today, it's pretty packed, we hope you have fun, keep your distances, be safe with everybody, have fun, eh? and we are ready to start. Yes. Let's go. So, you know, um, the world has changed in the last two years. And we don't meet anymore like the same way as we did before. And, I mean, you know, for example, we don't need to explain you like how to behave in such a situation. We assume you are like human beings, you are adults, you know how to work with those things. But life has changed. Life has changed a lot. We do home office a lot, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but we have the chance to meet in person at conferences. And what we saw this year is we were worried. We were thinking, would the people come again? And we really saw a huge response from all of you. A lot of people really wanted to be again in person and stay together for an event like this. Uh, yeah, and we actually also realized um, that people are going to meet here um, like as a, as a, like a team event. We'll yeah. talk about that also a bit later, and I think that's important. But from our perspective, you also have to know, like for us, it was quite tough in the, in the last two or, or yeah, almost three years um, preparing this event like this way. So um, we are not doing this as a business. So we are doing it in our free time and, you know, that makes it even harder actually to work towards something and then um, you have to move it so many times. And you probably read that in one of our newsletters, we moved it five times, the date, you know, how complicated that could be, yes. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was really a lot of work. But what we wanted to say in particular is that not doing this as a business is not our daily job. We also have another job. It gave us the opportunity to not be worried, uh, to keep the money we had from the tickets safe in the bank, no, no, not touching it, and we have been able to run it three years later without any trouble. So at the end, what happened is that we have been really, really lucky that we are not doing this as a business, not having any expenses for three years, allowed us to continue the organization. And we're and proud of that. Eh? Yes, and you also need to know, I mean, having you not asking us for the money back, yeah. that is actually awesome, right? And also the sponsors actually staying with us, even though we had some expenses because we had to cancel um, the VDZ 20 edition like four days before actually we, we wanted to run it. And that allowed us actually to like, continue and also being financially sustainable. What we mean with that is we didn't ask the government like for additional money. Yeah. So we just like were dealing with all the, the people we were working with, like the location, like with the cat catering, with you, with the sponsors. We just were able like to move it and we were really happy that this was possible. You could imagine if you like cancel event like four days before, it usually costs you 80 or 100% of the cost you would usually have. Yeah. So this would kill you, you know? Exactly, and all of this is uh, to explain that uh, uh, we started with this model. Uh, this conference is uh, made by developers, for developers. We don't want to be event organizer anytime. <laughs> we want to stay in our daily job. Uh, and we think this is one of the key points uh, for the success of this event. So you can trust that we know your type of problems, you know your interest, we test the, the the, the, the frameworks and the, and the languages that we talk about, the program committee is it's big for that. And we are really convinced VDZ should stay as it is. Yeah. And in this format, it survived also a pandemic. So we, we would like to continue in this way. So uh, just quickly to repeat what we always uh, say about Vox Day Zurich, uh, it's, it's really a community event. So we, you can see all the red t-shirts are the volunteers, the program committee. You will see the picture later. Uh, we are driven by really a lot of people that spend 
many hours of their time reviewing the talks, uh, voting the talks and the submissions we get, commenting, uh, asking their friends to submit, really doing a lot of work to guarantee the quality of the, of the talks that we have. And the other thing that uh, is, nowadays, part of uh, uh, Vox days, uh, beside the inclusiveness, I was forgetting this, uh, that we always li really like to allow everybody to attend, is that it's becoming a, a team event for many companies. So we have many companies bringing the whole team to the event and taking a day off from the job and having fun together. Yeah, so let's see actually the numbers of the companies. So these are not the sponsors. You can see the numbers from companies they're attending. And I think we should actually celebrate this because that's awesome. You probably know a lot of those logos. Maybe you're part of this company. But um, there is like one company which is not on the slide. It's called Gmail. And we had like 59 people with a Gmail email address we could not assign to the group. So maybe the statistics is wrong, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually great to have so many um, people from these companies here, like bringing their colleagues, bringing their friends, and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, actually, the, the number is not real. We have 618 <laughs> people <laughs> because we had to give out some more tickets. Uh, but, okay. So, um, you know that Vox Day is in Switzerland uh, born. In, in Ticino with the first edition, then we moved to Zurich, then we have been invited to CERN. Uh, we have been traveling all around Switzerland, covering the three regions, uh, the three main languages. Uh, in 2022, the only edition we will do is in Zurich. We are restarting, we are restarting uh, slowly, and next year we will uh, have again uh, other editions, and hopefully CERN will invite us again. We are waiting for them. Um, we have... Um, Many, many, many uh, speakers, 40% of the speakers working in Switzerland. That's always very important for us. And the absolute majority of attendees are working in Switzerland. And all our sponsors are, no, almost all our sponsors are uh, Swiss sponsors. Eh? So we're, we're really proud to say that it's a Swiss made event <laughs> with heart. Uh, but this is part of a big family. We are part of uh, the Vox community that grew up from DevOps. Uh, there are multiple events all around the world, the 29 nations uh, doing this type of event from developers uh, for the developers, uh, where we like to share the knowledge, we bring the know-how and the, the speakers with a high quality close to your office, and you know that uh, there is the quality that you expect and the value for money. And also the other thing is there are new such events actually popping up and I'm talking about um, Vox Days Trieste, right? Exactly, Trieste. Uh, which they will run in the end of June and uh, this will be like the new edition there. Absolutely. And so actually this family is also growing. Absolutely, very fast. Yeah, so you see here all the faces of the speakers we have like throughout the day. And we have like 35 speakers and some of them are doing like a single talk, some of them are like in a pair on stage, and we just like um, wanted to share also some numbers, and um, Federico said it before, from the speakers we had 40% um, are Swiss, so we think it's important to share the story from the people actually living in Switzerland, maybe showing their use cases, uh, what they are doing, what they are building in, in terms of technology and so on, and we are also really proud of that we have of the speakers, 12% female speakers, so... Not um, enough, it's not Yeah, enough. it's still not enough, but, but we are working really hard on this and it's, it's a really a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we need to... So, improve. yeah. As, as, an, as an industry, not only as an event, eh? We actually had um, two, now 164 um, submissions and our program committee had like the difficult choice to pick from those. Yeah. So for us it was also a challenge, and I think you can go to the next one. It was a challenge actually that we said we are going to run the event um, in March. And then actually the problem was, oh, you knew in February we had this peak and we said, oh, we can probably not run it in a safe way in, in March, so we are going to move it over to May. 
And that was then also the challenge that we had to ask the speakers again. Are you willing to come? Are you able to come? And we also had to organize a few more faces because some of them said, oh, we cannot come, it doesn't fit into my calendar. Or we have some policies at the company or we don't feel safe yet. Yeah. And this um, brought up a, a new challenge for us. We also had the three speakers coming from Ukraine that were not able to join us. So we also had to... to substitute that. Yeah. They helped us. Actually. They were really friendly to help us. So you see like many faces um, of the team behind, we call that program committee. So um, that means like people from the community, from the Java user group, from, from other areas are helping us to build up the program. It's not just like Federico and me. Yeah. And actually I want also to introduce you to um, Amrita. She's now coming to stage as well. Yeah. And we have also now, like in the core team, where we are organizing the, the event, a lady. <laughs> and yes, obviously, that's also important. Welcome, Anita. <laughs> and since the event is um, getting bigger, it's important that we are going to distribute the load a bit more. And um, she actually helped us even like throughout the last um, two and a half years, three years, yeah. with sponsors. And she was like a, a big help in these regards. And on the right side, you see actually the people helping us. So we all wear like red t-shirts, so it's easy to, to find us if you have some issues uh, or if you need some things, just let us know. They are everywhere throughout the event. Thank so, you. Thank you, Patrick and Federico. Good morning, everybody. Now I know the real reason <laughs> why I'm here, gender equality, but no jokes about no, it. No. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> we, we want to improve. We want to improve. Absolutely. We but need. thank you so much. I'm also very proud and honored to be, you know, working with you, collaborating with you. And going very fast, a uh, big shout out to our sponsors uh, who have continued their support in uh, following our uh, dreams and vision to make this happen. Uh, one important thing is that we are not automatically giving your contact details to our sponsors. So if you want them to come in touch, to get in touch with you, uh, I would request that you go to their booths and then let them scan your badges so that they have your details and then they can get in touch with you. Exactly, thank you. Uh, next is diversity and inclusion supporters. We are very proud that uh, we have this kind of support for our community. And to this, we actually thank our, these companies, these companies here who have actually uh, covered the cost, uh, travel and logistic course, costs for the speakers from their side, uh, which, which enabled us to give free tickets or uh, invite people from the less represented communities and uh, which are, you know, here uh, at the bottom line. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Peter. We do? Yes, so um, as Federico already said, Vox Day Zurich will be the only event in Switzerland this year. And there is already some plans for Ticino, as you can see. So probably it's a good idea to go to Ticino in January when it's cold here and it's maybe a bit warmer in the Ticino. So um, you have a good reason to go there, obviously. And we have already the dates, it's like the 20th of January. So mark the dates, and as well also mark the dates for Vox Days in Switzerland, in, in Zurich, again, because we also discussed this and we think we won't like, or we don't want to collide actually with Chavaland, and that's why we moved it just a week before, so you could actually go to both conferences if you like. Yeah, and we will be back to the March season as usual. Yeah. May is really crowded for conferences. And yeah, and always more people working with us. So the uh, recipes for a successful day? Yes. Mm -hmm. So to make it as successful as possible, obviously, just like get together, discuss things, ask the speakers the questions. It's really important that you are able to do this and that you like get in touch again. So this makes a huge difference. Then also, wait a second, please. <laughs> um, then also, we try to be on time. And please help us with that, because that's really important. We don't want to like, move the beer at the end of the event like to 6 o'clock or something like this. Right. Then also, another thing is, like, if you need to um, do calls, for example, um, go out of the cinema and take your calls there, because the reception in here is quite bad. We have a Wi-Fi that works quite well. It's um, also tested. And um, you can use that throughout the days to like, post pictures on social media and so on. But if you do this, 
and um, just look around. There might be people having a lanyard which says, please don't share on social media. So if you, for example, don't want to be seen on social media, go back to the ticket corner and ask them for this badge and they will provide it to you. Yeah. And everyone knows then that one should not take picture of those people, just like to, to express that you don't want to show up somewhere. You know, maybe actually your boss might see you on the picture of the event here, but you're not allowed to. So, <laughs> or maybe somebody else, you know. So you can, you can do this, obviously. I do. So uh, we always like to collect your feedbacks. So please use the hashtag VDZ22 on, um, on Twitter. We have the DevOx mobile app where you can see the program. You can um, subscribe to some talks so you will get notified. And then at the end of the day, you will receive our small short survey so that we can collect more feedbacks from you. Please give your feedbacks. And votes your talk, the, the speaker will receive the votes. Yeah. So um, as I said before, there is already Wi-Fi. You have it at the back of your batch. So you have everything there. I think, and um, we will also record the sessions from today. So that means you will be able to see all the missed talks afterwards on YouTube again, as you're used to, right? Um, we will have after our welcome talk, um, the keynote of Nicolas, and then it's a possibility to have a short break. So please go down, grab a coffee, maybe visit the sponsor booth or just like talk to each other. Make sure that you distribute very well because we have like two areas where we serve coffee because we know we are quite a lot of people and we don't want to have huge queues and that was also like one of the feedbacks from previous years. We will have around lunchtime um, slots which are a little bit smaller. So we have like 20 minute slots for talks around lunchtime. The idea is that not everyone goes at the same time for lunch because you can imagine if 600 people are standing in a queue, it's yeah, it takes time, it's not so nice. So that's why we allow you actually to have a talk and maybe go 20 minutes um, later. It should be the way that everyone gets food, right? Yeah. So you are not need to rush first, you can also go second, it's not a problem. Yes. Uh, thanks. So don't forget the uh, most important or other important things apart from the talks. So there's beers at uh, 5 o'clock in the sponsor area, and we would like to celebrate after finishing this great event after two years. Yeah. <laughs> and then don't forget the ice cream and popcorn during the whole day at the booth of Java User Group Switzerland and Cloud Bees. Uh, again, uh, at 5 o'clock, there is the draw at the sponsor and the sponsor prizes at 5 o'clock at Java User Group's yeah. booth. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the ice cream is in the afternoon. And yeah. you know more about the popcorn, do you? They come in the afternoon, too. They also yeah, come in the yeah. afternoon. It's not throughout the, the whole day. The so morning, there are <laughs> gifts. <laughs> yes. There is okay. enough food anyway throughout yeah, the whole day. Yeah, but yeah. we thought it's a great idea yeah. to have some and ice cream. those uh, beers, popcorn, and ice cream are offered by our sponsor, North uh, 47. Uh, the Jug uh, CH is offering the ice cream and uh, Cloud Bees, the popcorn. Uh, so big thanks to them. Yeah, and then... As always, the last thing on the slide, yeah. um, as always, um, we have some t-shirts, but we don't print for everyone a t-shirt because we don't want to throw them away afterwards. So we have a limited um, set of t-shirts at a quarter past five. So when the event is finished, basically we go down and then you can find a t-shirt if you want to. If you stay until the end. Yes. <laughs> okay, quickly because we are already late, but we really want to spend two minutes about the responsibility that we feel as a developers uh, in our daily job. As we said, we always speak about inclusiveness, diversity. We try to support minorities in multiple ways. These, uh, we think it's important also when we work in, in, uh, in our daily job. So building uh, uh, accessible software. Uh, we would like, for example, to have a sign language translator if, uh, for people that cannot hear. Um, so. All the initiatives uh, we really uh, think are important and we would like to let you think that you can act and you can take part of this responsibility in your daily job. And we really trust that this is important and will help our community to improve. Uh, we are also, uh, I changed my job in the last two years. I moved now to the hospital services uh, in, in Ticino. Uh, so 
it, I really feel this responsibility thinking that the software we develop take care of the health of the people and this makes me think a lot about uh, how careful we have to be when we write one line of code because of the responsibility we have, the power we have. So this is one point. Another example is energy consumption. Don't waste CPU cycles just for fun. Take care of that. Uh, so in, in, in the point is each of us, we are very lucky we have the power to influence, we have, we have put our hands on the code, we change the stuff. We also have the power to choose the employee we want to work for if they satisfy our expectation and our goals. Well, that's really, really important. And we just want to give this message to you to think about. And maybe another thing, and also then like going towards then the keynote, is you know what happened in the previous weeks, months, or like the last few years. We had like really bad events like data breaches all the time. We have like lots of dangerous vulnerabilities in our application. Um, you know actually that this or a lot of code is just produced by copy and paste, maybe from Stack Overflow or maybe from, from um, somewhere else. We trust in libraries. We don't check actually, we just like assume that it's working. Yes, it's working, but maybe we don't know exactly how it's working. And there are like fancy things like GitHub Copilot. I just want to mention that uh, because it can be really scary if you think of like if somebody just uh, tells you this is the perfect code snippet, you should add now in this line into your code. So how to make sure like that it, it does the thing what it should. We should be more aware of and being aware that it might introduce some security holes or might do some other things like stealing credit cards, doing Bitcoin mining in your browser, whatever. I mean, there are like some really creative ideas you cannot think of. And I think this is like a part beside like the diversity and inclusiveness, the ethics, the security. We have this power, but we also should like educate ourselves Absolutely. in these areas. And like also learning together and exchanging these war stories that we can learn from those things. Yes. So we know we all make mistakes, we're developers, we're humans, but we should learn as a whole um, with these problems. So therefore, I think now um, I ask um, Nicolas to the stage. And um, yeah, I would love to like, tell everyone, have fun, get in touch with each other, and uh, make the best out of the day. Yes, definitely. So thank you, Nicolas, and let's speak about security.